Okay, so this is Shulchan uh, Aruch Siman Bet, um, August eleventh, two thousand fourteen. So Din Levi Begadim Uvo Vav Seifim. There are six halachot in this uh, in this section. So the halacha is as follows: Halacha Aleph. Now these are halachot that some of them are just sort of general uh, ideas. They're not halachot in the sense of technical mitzvot so much as they are more. A lot of them ethically based. So he says you shouldn't put on. Now you have to keep in mind that the clothing that they used to wear in the times of the of the uh, the times of the uh, of the Talmud, they used to wear like togas. You know, they used to wear like pullovers, like uh, robes. They didn't wear shirts and pants like we have now. So he says, You shouldn't get dressed when you're sitting down. And also, the other thing about those days is they slept naked. Okay, so when they would wake up in the morning, they didn't have any clothes on. They would be under the covers. So if they come out from under the covers and then get dressed, they're coming out with no clothes on at all. So that's so the more tsanua, the more modest way to get dressed in the morning is to not to lo yilbash halukom yushav ella yikach halukov yachnis bo rosho uzro otav beodenu shochev. He should slip into his toga or whatever while he's still lying down, in other words, so that he doesn't have to expose himself by taking off the blanket and sitting up before he puts on his clothes. Now, th- nowadays, most people sleep with some kind of pajamas on or something like that. They don't really sleep uh, totally unclothed. So it's not as much of a... But still, the idea of observing some level of modesty, even when you're changing your clothes, is, you know, not walking around unclothed is, uh, is still a, a principle. So that when he sits up or stands up, he's covered. In other words, he doesn't walk around, he doesn't... So, that, of course, if a person has to go, let's say, to the shower, to the bath, he used to go to a bathhouse, public bathhouse, of course, he has to take his clothes off. He can't go in the shower with clothes on. That's not going to work. You have to. But in situations where, the, the, the principle is, in situations where it's possible to minimize the amount of immodesty. So we try. We try to be modest about uh, being unclothed. Because of the, the whole idea here is being aware of Hashem. Like we said in the first Siman, even when a person's alone in their house, they still have an awareness that they're in the presence of Hashem. And if a person uh, walks around naked, there's a sense of uh, uh, arrogance, haughtiness to that. Not recognizing that you're in the presence of Hashem. Al Yomar, the second halacha, don't say, Hineni bachadre chadarim. I'm in the innermost chamber of my house. Miroeni. Because what's the whole idea of a person they feel comfortable not being covered? It's because they think nobody's watching them, nobody's looking. Now, obviously, Hashem is not offended by nakedness. He created people naked. Okay, it's not about Hashem, it's about us. That it, it, when we when we conduct ourselves a certain way, it instills in ourselves a sense of being in the presence of Hashem. It's not that Hashem is going to say, oh, I don't want to look at this guy walking around naked. It doesn't matter to him. Right, he was with, with the sand up to the neck. Right, because he wanted to be able to say divrei Torah and stuff like that. He didn't want to be unclothed, of yeah. course. Since Hashem, His glory fills the world, so a person should always have a sense of being in the presence of Hashem, and just like in the presence, like what happens when Adam and Chava hear the Kol Hashem Elohim Metalech Bagan Neruah Hayom? So it says that they hear the voice of God, they cover up, because there's a sense of if you recognize Hashem is in your midst, that you 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 cover up, because naturally you will put yourself in a condition of uh, you know respect a more respectful state, not a state where everything is exposed. Okay, that's, that's the instinct of a person. And so when you feel that nobody's watching you, you feel like you can walk around naked with impunity because, you know, nobody's watching you. But it's not that Hashem is offended by the nakedness. It's that it shows something about you, that you feel like you're actually all alone. You feel like you're totally in private because uh, you could do whatever you want because Hashem is not watching you. And that's not the right attitude to have. So it's trying to instill in us a certain attitude that we're aware of God all the time. Okay, not that not that nakedness is offensive, but that we should habituate ourselves to behaving as if we're always in the presence of Melech Gadol, like it says before, a great king. Gimel yedakdek b'chaluko lelovsho kedarko. This is very interesting. When you dress, dress properly. You know, don't let your collar be flipped like this unless you're the Fonz. Remember the Fonz? They don't know who the Fonz is. Do you? Okay. So the uh, then he had the, that was the style. 
Okay? Uh, you don't, don't flip up the collar. Okay? Don't have what's supposed to be inside out. So don't have the tag of your shirt, you know, sticking out. Put your socks on up inside out. Put the shirt on with the inside out, you know? Sometimes everyone's had that experience, especially when they were a kid, that they put on their clothes inside out. One day they came to school and said, oh, What did it's I do? Like My shirt, did it ever happen to you? Maybe? Yeah, it happens. Right? So it happens to the best of us. Not to me, but some other people. Many other people. Um, the, uh, th- this, it's hard to put on backwards. If I try to put on this shirt backwards, the buttons won't go in and I'll immediately see that it's backwards. Right? Huh? Your undershirt? Yeah. It can happen with undershirt. It can happen with the t-shirt. Sometimes you don't realize it's inside out. You pull it on. Happens. Shorts. Right? Some, like the shorts, that if they don't have the button in the front, but you just pull them on. So then you could easily put them on backwards because, you know, there's nothing that has to hook or fasten. So that it's possible to do that. Like with socks and so on. So the idea is, wh- what's the difference? What, who cares if your mother dresses you funny, as they used to say? Right? Who cares if you uh, walk out with your shirt inside out, socks inside out? Uh, uh, what's the difference? The idea is, it's not kavod la Torah. As a Jew, when you go out in the world, if somebody sees you that you look like a schlumpy, disheveled pig... They're going to say that that schlumpy, disheveled person represents Hashem. Well, obviously, Hashem is not anything very significant or important because, you know, these are His representatives and they can't even put a shirt on right. If they can't put a shirt on right, how are they going to teach me Torah? So it's proper for a person who is a ben Torah to represent Hashem in a respectful, in respectful dress. A person should be dressed in a way that is mechubad, <laughs> not in a way that is beneath their, that is undignified. So therefore, should be careful that, you know, he doesn't have... The other example is, talks about Talmudic Chachamim, they shouldn't go out with a stain on their shirt, but that really applies to any Jew. You know, you don't, we shouldn't go out with stains on our shirt, torn clothing, uh, because people look at you and they say, Am Hashem Eleh, like it says in the Navi. This is the people of God, this is how they come out with, a, uh, you know, a, a spaghetti sauce stain, you know, down their shirt, and a torn, this, you know, it's just not... The way, that not, you're not being a good representative of Hashem if you go out into the world in that way. That that's the essential like wearing reason. Wearing jeans or like only an like under t-shirt. That, but like, do you think that's it? Do you think that you're saying that Haredim are going to throw a rock out? Listen, of I'm not. I'm not. I don't care. I, I don't care about what other people say that are Jewish that have specific dress codes. I mean, that's their that's their personal issue. I'm talking about the nations of the world. See you. And they say, you know, I'm not going to be your fashion consultant. Don't get me wrong. You know, I don't know. I don't know anything about what you should wear. I have no idea. All I'm saying is, if you dress in a disheveled way, you could you can wear a t-shirt and jeans and look like a million bucks. You can wear a suit and look like a totally disheveled uh, guy. Okay, I've seen both. You know, some of these guys, a guy who's properly, you know, got his act together and he's groomed properly and he took, you know, he's taken a shower within the last couple of weeks. You know. Somebody who takes care of himself, wears clean clothing, whatever. He can wear a t-shirt and jeans. He looks good. He goes, you know, he could look perfectly fine. Uh, but then another person can have a suit, but he hasn't changed his shirt since the pasta that he ate, you know, three weeks ago. And it has, you know, you can tell what he's eaten, what the menu has been for the past few weeks by looking at the uh, down the shirt, you know. That that's not a good representative of Hashem. You don't want that. So so too, if the guy comes in and his shirt is backwards and his thing is... Uh, fl- so it's just not a... Uh, it's not mechubad. And we want to present to the world in a way that is respectable. This is what it says about Talmidei Chachamim. But really, it's something that every person should aspire to do. To dress in a way that is respectful of yourself and therefore respectful and dignified to the world. Like Rabbi Akiva said, you should always wash your face, right? The famous Rabbi Akiva. You should wash your face every day. Lichvod kono. In honor of your creator, because a person sees a person, a person sees you and says you look disheveled. You look like you're half asleep. You know, it's a, you don't come across as a good representative. Now this is based on a Gemara in Masechet Shabbat, and it's very very interesting because in in Masechet Shabbat there are actually two statements. One is called the Brayta. One is a statement of Rabbi Yochanan. One says that you should put your right shoe on first. One says you should put your left shoe on first. Each one gives a reason. Why is the right side important? Well, if you look at the Beit HaMikdash, almost everything is done with the right hand. 
whenever blood is put on anybody in the Beit HaMikdash, like a Mitzorah or anybody like that, it's always on the right hand. When the Kohanim are consecrated, they put oil and things like that on their right thumb, right? Right thumb, right big toe. Everything is the right side. On the other hand, the left side also has something very significant. What's something very significant about the left side? Can you tell me what's significant about the left side? You can get this one. Is there any mitzvah you do with the, specifically with left arm? Tefillin, right? If you're a righty at least, right? Tefillin, right hand. Right, right, it goes on the left hand. So he says, listen, when you put on shoes, what do you do with the shoes? You tie them, right? So you're tying tefillin, tying shoes. You know, we should go with the left side. So then the Gemara brings two statements, brings one view that says, do either way. Either way is fine because they both have a good reason behind them. And then the Gemara brings a couple of views that say, you know what, I saw Rav Kahana, he didn't care. I, he, he was random. He did whatever shoe fit on first. He didn't, uh, he didn't go by this rule at all. So the question is, since the later Amoraim seemed to rule that it doesn't matter, because they said, oh, we saw Rav Kahana, he wasn't makpid. We saw this Amora, he wasn't makpid. He wasn't particular about it. So therefore, Harambam doesn't bring it. The Geonim don't bring these halachot. The Rif doesn't bring these halachot. A lot of the early poskim, they don't mention these halachot at all. About the right shoe, the left shoe, none of it. But the tour, which we said last time, the Shulchan Aruch is based on the tour. The tour brings, and the Palet Atosafot, and Rabbeinu Yonah, some of the Rishonim, bring this halacha about the right and the left shoe. And what do they do? They bring the compromise of the Gemara. They don't bring the last opinions that are cited in the Gemara, because the last opinion cited in the Gemara is, it doesn't matter. They bring one of the middle opinions. What's the middle opinion? Like this. Yin ol min al yamin tachila, velo yikshirenu. We want to make a compromise. So what we're going to do is put on your right shoe first. Don't tie it. And then put on your left shoe and tie it. Why? Because tying is based on tefillin. Right? So there's left shoe, tie then then go back and tie the right shoe. So what happens? You get both. You put on the right shoe first, but you tie the left shoe first. Ah, so therefore you got both of them came in first. Okay, everybody wins. Everybody wins. Why, why does it have to be a, a certain way of putting <clears throat> like what's, what's special about putting on shoes? Okay. No, actually, there's no, there's no special way I have to put on my shirt. Let's say I want to put on my button down shirt. So I put on my right pick, my right sleeve first, or I put on my left sleeve first. Right, so. Bad, why do you, why is it because of Chetzer and Rachamim? So that's Rachamim. Kabbalah, that's Kabbalah. So, so somebody once said to me, oh, this whole thing about shoes is actually just Kabbalah, but it's not. It's in the Gemara, it's in Masachet Shabbat. Okay? And it has to do with honoring. <laughs> this, it seems like the reason behind it is showing honor to the right side because of the mitzvot that are done with it. Why shoes is a really good question. right? Why shoes? So, I mean, you're right. Why not the arms and things like that? So, you actually, in the Magen Avram brings that, um, it brings that very point. He says when you have uh, two sides of, your, of a shirt, he says, he says first... He says that too. He says you should put your right sleeve in and then your left sleeve. He says if you take a shower, you should wash the right and the left. So the, 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 the logic behind it applies throughout. That there's a kavod given to the right side because the right side, more mitzvot are done. Most of the time mitzvot are done with the right hand, right? We always do things with the right hand. Ah, so that whole question is brought by the poskim. That's exactly right. The poskim ask, "What about a lefty? What about a lefty?" So the, there's a question: Does a lefty go what's according to small kol adam, the left hand of everybody, meaning the regular left hand, or should they go by the right side for them because they put on tefillin on the right side? Also, the, when you take off your talis side, you have to take off with your right level. Take off tefillin, they say take off with no, your left the hand and the talit. The but that's because since it's the you're supposed to take off your talit and tefillin with the weaker hand because you're showing that you don't want to get the mitzvah off of you so quickly. But, but that's later in the Shulchan Aruch, it's not here. Yeah. Yeah. It, it does come, it's mentioned. But that, so that's that's a question that's brought by the poskim, they talk about it. And Chacham Ovadia talks about that in Yalkut Yosef. And what he says is, he says that since you see that the Shulchan Aruch, when it comes to Lulav, are you lefty? No, okay. So in the in do you know what famous character in the Tanakh was lefty? Oh, Gidon. I'm sorry, not Gidon. Ehud uh, Ehud uh, uh, what's his name? Uh, uh, no, no, no. Uh, Ehud Ben Ehud, right. 
It was Ehud, not, not uh, the one who killed uh, Eglon. Ehud, beginning of Shoftim. So, uh, anyway, the um, he says that in when it comes to lulav, you're supposed to hold the lulav with your right hand. What about a lefty? So the Shulchan Aruch says that even a lefty should hold it with the right hand. That's what the Beit Yosef says. So he says, you see from that, that in general, whenever there's a halakha about the left side, except for tefillin, in all other cases, we still apply it to the left side. The regular left. Even, so even a lefty would put on their right shoe first and then their left shoe and tie the left shoe first. Some argue with that and say, no, because in tef- it's going by tefillin, the rules of tefillin. Also, and since that person, tefillin goes the other way, maybe the shoes should also go the other way. So it's really a debate. Chacham Ovadia says that the lefty should also do it like everybody else. But other poskim say no. They say exactly what you say. That it should go by the way that that individual puts on tefillin. So also washing your hand. You <coughs> put your hand, oh, you pick up the cup with water. You, you, uh, the, uh, the left hand, it takes, and you take washing the first your right hand, then the right. left hand. That's right. So that's what you do. That's right. <laughs> Always the right comes first, right? What's the reason for the uh, <coughs> Because, mo- well, there's a Kabbalistic reason and there's a Nigla reason. Okay. The open reason is because so many mitzvot are done with the right hand. The Torah favors the right hand when it comes because it's the stronger arm. So therefore, we show kavod to that arm because it does more mitzvot. The person who's a lefty is going to be doing more mitzvot than his left hand. It's debatable, like I said. So the Shulchan Aruch says that the lefty also has to do those mitzvot with the right hand, unless it's the tefillin. Tefillin is the only exception. Okay, so so uh, that's the, that's the reason. Or kabbalistically, the right is you know chesed, and the left side is a uh, din, or the left side could be the, symbolized this yetzara. Some of the some of the kabbalah says it symbolizes yetzara. So the right hand is the you know the yetzara tov overpowering yetzara. So the, you have to give more to the yetzara tov. There's a lot of kabbalistic and symbolic interpretation. The simple reading what the Gemara talks about is mitzvot. It says mitzvot are done mainly primarily with the right hand, except for certain exceptions. And uh, in, we, we reflect those exceptions. Specifically tefillin, it's funny, so they bring, it's brought, actually the uh, Rabbi Akiva Eger brings it here, but it's brought in the Levush also, that tefillin, right, w- w- the, there's a Midrash about Avraham Avinu. Avraham Avinu said to the king of Sodom, Im michut ve'ad seroch na'al. I won't take a string and I won't take a shoelace from you. Meaning, because the king of Sodom, after Abraham comes and he liberates the, the people of Sodom from the, uh, from the other kings, so they offer him all the money. They say, take all the money, I just want my people back. Take the money. He says, nope, I won't take a string, I won't take a, uh, a shoelace. So what does the Midrash say? Because of the zuchut that he said, I won't take a string, his descendants got the mitzvah of tzitzit. Because of the zechut that he said, I won't take a shoelace, they got the mitzvah of tefillin. Okay? So tefillin and shoelaces are connected in the Midrash. Because Abraham Avinu said, I don't want to take a shoelace, he got the mitzvah of tefillin. So therefore, what happens? Ah, so when we tie our shoes, we remember the mitzvah of tefillin. By tying the, the, the left shoe first. It reminds us of that idea that Abraham Avinu was given the mitzvah of tefillin, or his descendants were, because of his refusing to take a shoelace. So it's very uh-huh. interesting. I have a question. Is it right now, when we get up, what's the <laughs> order to how we dress, which one we would dress first? We are wearing underwear, then the under t-shirt, then pants. Which it, doesn't ta- it doesn't give a reason. It doesn't give that in Shulchan Aruch. It doesn't Is say an order to the clothes. Aruch? No, it doesn't give an order to that. It just says you should try to be as modest as possible with getting dressed. What well, the shoelace is back and different from today, we can assume like they were sandaling and they were tied like similar to the tefillin rolls around. Yeah, they probably tied like that. You're probably right. They probably did tie around like that with straps. It's more with straps. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. I, I didn't think of that, but you're probably right. They probably were leather straps wrapping around, so it was much more similar to tefillin. It's true. Not like the way that we tied like a bow or whatever. Now, if the shoes don't have laces, by the way, then you just put on the right shoe first. You wouldn't have to put the right shoe, then the left shoe, then tie, obviously. You just put on the right shoe and you put on the left shoe. You don't have to do anything for the left then, if you don't have laces. This is a din that many of the poskim don't bring. Even the ones who say you're supposed to put your right foot, then your left foot, then go back to the right foot. Don't bring this rule that you have to take off the left shoe first. But the Shulchan Aruch says that Rabbeinu Yonah Yona quotes it, and therefore, um, it's logical. Why does he say it's logical? Because, why do you put the right shoe on first? To show kavod to the right. 
So you don't. So therefore, you should leave the right shoe on the longest by taking off the left shoe first. It's logical. He says it's a logical extension of the first one. Okay. Then he says that <laughs> another principle that's more like a spiritual awareness principle. Asur lelech the koma zekufa. A person shouldn't walk with a proud kind of a stance, overly proud, kind of haughty, um, straight back. Velo yelech arba amot arosh, and he shouldn't go for amot with an uncovered head. And a person should always check to see if he has to go to the bathroom. These are all rules for the morning. In other words, when a person starts moving about in the morning, he should make sure he goes to That's the bathroom if he needs for to. A couple more <coughs> to the bed, right? That's for washing hands. But we're not up to that yet. That's going to come soon. Okay. He should cover his body up. And he shouldn't walk around barefoot either. And he should make sure that he goes to the bathroom in the morning and night, what, twice a day, because this is the way to be clean and take care of his body. Now, obviously, this is talking about a time where people had to go to the bathroom. They had to, like, go far. You know, they, had to, they, they didn't have, like, indoor plumbing bathrooms inside. You know, they had outhouses. So sometimes they had public outhouses. They didn't even have their own. So they would have to go. To go to the bathroom was like a process. You know, you had to go out to the outhouse, find a place to, to go, or go outside somewhere to go. It wasn't as simple as it is today. So for us, we don't have to worry as much about scheduling our bathroom trips. You know, back then, it was much more of a concern to make sure that you had a regular schedule of bathroom. Because, God forbid, you wake up in the middle of the night and you have to go to the bathroom. Or in the middle of the day, where are you going to find a place to go to the bathroom? It wasn't like today that you have did bathrooms they, everywhere. Did there, the rush bus said that you don't have to walk, uh, you, could, you, could walk you don't have to you know, walk the four arm mode because uh, the, they have a ceiling that could walk uh, like more than four arm <laughs> Well, that's talking more about Nitzilat Yadayim, which we're going to get to. We're going to get to soon. Oh, okay. What was the four arm mode you were talking about? That, this is talking about covering your head. Oh, keep up, yeah. Oh, okay. Not about, not yet about. Are you talking about related to like a keeper or something? Yeah, about a keeper or something. That's yeah. when there was a me, there is, there was. That's, that's what they're talking about. There was that, that was an halacha. The Torah didn't say that we are supposed to wear. It. That is true. It doesn't say any of these things because these are all sort of practices that the Chachamim are recommending for good midot. Oh, because this is go- midot chasidut. Oh, because of the going they were because they take off and they put it back on again. That's why we we put it on. Well, let's let's take let's take it step by step. Let's take it step by step. Okay. okay? So so um, first, walking with an arrogant stance is considered to be kilo. It's like you're pushing away the feet of the Divine Presence. It's like if you walk around in a haughty way with a haughty posture, it's, it's a lack of modesty. It's a lack of humility. That's the problem. That the, uh, now these are midat chasidut, what we call. This, this is talking about ways of behavior that are to inculcate or to, you know, to allow us to, to uh, uh, instill in ourselves you know, good Character. It's not. These are not halachot. There's no. There's no. Nobody's going to come with a ruler and see if your posture is too haughty. You know. It's not a technical halacha. It's trying to give you a sense that a person should carry himself in a way that's not haughty, because your midot are affected by the way you walk. If a person walks in a very uh, regal manner, it makes them think that they're the most important person in the world. You don't want to end up developing bad character even from your posture and the way you carry yourself. Giloy arosh. Again, this is something walking around without a hair, head covering is something which is midat chasidut. It's something now, there were some achronim who, uh, who came along and said that, well, nowadays where you see that the non-Jews, specifically, they take off their hat when they come inside. Jews should wear co- hair cover- head covering because you know, they, they should show that they're different. That was one opinion in the achronim. But the general consensus among the poskim is that covering the head for men is only a midat chasidut. It, nowadays, it's a custom. So Chacham Obadiah says that a person should show that they identify with the religious community, they should show that they are your eshamayim, they fear God, and now it's become a symbol of fearing Hashem. It's like, I'll give you an example of that. Let's say somebody is saying, you know, saying Kaddish is a relatively new custom in Jewish history. It's something that's only the past few hundred years. You know, it's not something for thousands of years. They, in the times of the Talmud, they didn't say Kaddish for people who passed away, but in the, around the times of, uh, you know, the 15, 16, hundreds, this became a common practice and it has a Kabbalistic roots to it also the idea of saying Kaddish for a loved one. Now let's say a person gets up and says, I'm a Maimonidean, you know, I don't believe in any of this Kabbalah, anything that came you know, after the year 1190 when the Rambam died, you know, I don't hold by it and therefore I'm not going to say Kaddish. So 
I would, you know, for, for a person to say that is there is being a purist, but on the other hand, like from a kibbut of the M standpoint, it's become such an entrenched idea that you say Kaddish, let's say for your parents, that it would be disrespectful of the person not to say Kaddish, you know? So, so too. So Chacham Ovadia says when it comes to a kippah, now it's become like a symbol of, it's saying, I am part of the religious camp and I, I fear Hashem. So if you don't do it, it's almost now like you're making a statement. It used to be, you know, especially amongst Faradim, not very common to wear a kippah out Side. Now it's much more common. There was a time when nobody did. Nobody did. Nobody wore kippot uh, outside. In most Sephardic communities in the world, it was not done. It was done in the Bet Knesset and at home when they said brachot and they prayed. But when they went out, they didn't do it. Um, maybe the very pious people, the chachamim and stuff like that, they wore hats and things like that, or turbans or whatever the case may be. But they didn't, uh, they didn't necessarily wear kippot. And now it's become a very, very common practice among Jews. And so Chacham Avadia feels, uh, you know, wrote very, very much uh, in favor of it, but uh, that nowadays it has a greater significance. Nowadays, even the type of kippah, because if you wear one type of kippah, it means that you're, uh, you are a modern Orthodox. And if you're another kind, it means that you're a Haredi. And if you're another kind, this, you know, it's become too much with the sim- symbolism of the kippot. It's, it's gone overboard. Now the Pirchei Teshuvah brings... A, uh, a discussion of some of the uh, some of the uh, uh, parameters of the uh, wearing of a kippah or the wearing of head covering, and some of the uh, some of the ideas here. And one question that comes up is, can you cover your head with your hand? Right, that's one of the people do. Right, when they want to say a bracha or something, can you cover your head with your hand? So the halacha that's brought by most is now there are certain times where you have to cover your head, even according to halacha. And that is when you're praying or saying Hashem's name. If you're praying or saying Hashem's name, you definitely have to. Even if you're at home. <coughs> the original halacha was you weren't supposed to go out with your hair, had, had head uncovered. Then it became even in your house. But certainly if you're going into the Bet Knesset or if you're saying a bracha, you have to wear a kippah. <coughs> so the question becomes, what if I just do this? What if I don't have a kippah and I just cover my head with my hand? Can I do that? The ceiling is too high. It's not close enough. So... Uh, so what do I what do I do then? So the answer is somebody else's hand is considered to be a good covering, but your own hand isn't, because your own hand is part of your body. It's not a different object covering your head. Someone else's hand is a different object. It's not part of your body, so it would be allowed. And then and then there's a famous teshuvah of the Maharshal. The Maharshal talks about how people would sit in their house and study Torah without a kippah because they weren't walking around outside. They were just sitting in place. So they need a kippah. It says you're not supposed to walk for amot, or you're not allowed to walk. You're not supposed to walk in the street. It's immodest to walk in the street. It shows fear of God to go out wearing a kippah. But sitting in your house reading uh, Sifrei Kodesh, what's the problem? But it's very interesting in the Chuvata Maharshal, which um, I don't see. I know that the that they cited here. He cites it, but he doesn't. Um, he doesn't give you the full text of it. He just uh, refers to it here, but. Um, but the and, and you know he says if you're going to the bath if you're going to the shower there's no you shouldn't be wearing a kippah. Chacham Avadi even says if you go to the beach you don't have to wear a kippah. So you're going in the water you're coming out. He says if you sit down to eat by the beach then you should put a kippah because you're going to say brachot. But otherwise as you're going back and forth on the beach going in the water going to the shower and the thing you don't have to wear a kippah. It should be that should be common sense. But you know sometimes people need to hear that. Um, the Maharshal has this very interesting teshuvah where he says that people used to sit in the house learning Torah without a kippah but the problem was people would walk by the window and see them and start chattering about how they weren't religious you know, because they were not wearing a kippah and all that so he said, it's probably better to wear some kind of covering even if it's a light one, you know, it doesn't matter what the material is made of or anything like that and it'll be, it, it would be good enough this, I, is it true that the like, lot of the even when he's sleeping, he's studying in his sleep also. Like well, it's hard to talk about his sleep because he kind of like never really went to bed. Like, no, I mean, it, That's the problem. Like he always like would fall asleep on a chair for a couple of hours and then go back to learning. He wasn't like a sleeper, you know. So it's hard to know. Um, but, uh, oh, I see where it is. In the Be'er Hetev he talks about it, not in the Sharei Tshuva, where he brings the, um, he talks about going into the Bet Knesset. He says, for sure, that you can't do without a kippah. The Marshal talks about sitting in the bath and wanting a drink. Or you're in the night and you want a drink and you don't have a kippah. So he says, then you can cover your head with your hand. But the Taz says, it's better not to. You should have something other than your own body covering your head if you're going to say a baracha. Okay, he talks about a toupee in the Ber I thought it was in the Pechet Shuvah, in the Sharei Shuvah. I was looking in the wrong place, right? He talks about a toupee. He says, Me'ikaradin, wearing a toupee is considered a he- head covering, of course. 
even for saying Barachot, but the only problem is Marit Ayin. Somebody's going to see you saying Barachot praying. That happened to me. See, one year, see, in, in my, my Bet Knesset in Maryland, dressing up on Purim was very important. And so I always had outrageous costumes. Like I, would pick, I had to always outdo myself, which is very stressful, actually. It always had to be something more over the top. Like one time I came as the Tin Man with full makeup and a full thing. You know, and um, one time I came as Darth Vader. One time I came as like it was always this elaborate, ridiculous, you know, getup that I do. And one year I came as Elvis, and the Elvis I had the Elvis suit and I had an Elvis wig, this huge wig. Okay, but but I we were going to synagogue and they said, well, you don't really need to wear a kippah because you know you, you have this. that huge wig. So, but I put a kippah on it anyway. Just to be, you know, because it was poor, it was fun. I was being very machmir. And I was reading the Megillah as Elvis. And so at the end of the Megillah reading, so the next Shabbat, a lady who had come to the synagogue on Purim, but hadn't been there before, comes and sees me and said to her friend, Hey, what happened to the rabbi's hair? You know, because they thought that the Elvis hair was really my hair. They didn't know that I didn't have any. So the. Uh, the lesson is, you know, Marita Ayin. If I had gone without a kippah and I just had that hair, people would have thought, some people, at least one person in the crowd, maybe more would have thought that I wasn't wearing a kippah reading the Megillah. So because of that, even somebody who has a toupee is recommended to wear a kippah, especially if they're saying, you know, if they're saying Hashem's name, or they're going into the Beit Knesset. Perhaps if they needed to for work, they're in a situation where it's difficult to wear a kippah, then, you know, wearing a toupee would be a good option for somebody who wants to have their head covered, but doesn't want to uh, wear a kippah in, in that setting. But otherwise, um, otherwise it would be, uh, it would be uh, you know, preferable to, to wear a kippah, uh, especially if you're saying barachot. And Chacham Ovadia says, of course, somebody who needs to go to work and can't wear a kippah, it's fine. Somebody, you know, there's certain, there are many circumstances where not wearing a kippah is okay because it's only midat chasidut. It's not something that you sh- one should take as an absolute halacha, except when... You're saying barachot or you're saying tefillah. Otherwise, when we do it, it's midat chasidut. It's a nice minhag. We're not saying not to do it. Um, we're saying one should do it if they can. It's a very good thing to do. It's a. It shows your ident- you identify with the Jewish community. It shows yirat shamayim. It's a. It's a positive thing. But if you are in a situation where you can't, you shouldn't feel like you're violating cardinal sin of Judaism not wearing a kippah because ultimately it is midat chasidut. <laughs>